I'm not gonna kiss you. <laughs> That's the reason. That's the reason she wants to Mary has never been to the FTC. Please, I'm different. <laughs> She's a little excited. Woo! <laughs> We've just been to happy hour, so we're kind of happy. Happy, happy. Well, this is something I didn't expect to be doing today. Who do we got here? Mr. Miko! Hey, we're gonna go and play nine holes at Apertula. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're gonna go and race the beach. Yeah. <laughs> These guys were gonna go north, and now they're gonna join us too. Woo! Oh, we've pulled up here at the old World War II site. Chris has decided that he needs a coffee because neither of us slept really well last night. So here we are. Australia remembers preservation project and rest area. It's again. We've been in Mount Isa for a few days. Um, holed up in the van, just, just doing some work, getting some things done. So we didn't get much time to explore, but like I said before, we'll be back to explore the area when we don't have much of a time restriction. So this one's over here making his coffee. That's a big coffee you're making there. Yeah. What size, what size is that mug? Massive Dometic mug, it's sick, and it stays hot. Like I could drive back to the east coast of Australia and it would still be hot. <laughs> nice. It's the best. Let's see what these guys are doing. There's a Campedia crew that we're gonna be camping oh, with. coming with a camera, quick run. So this is a coffee stop for us and it's a do the hair stop for Donna. <laughs> A food stop for little Jake. Jake the Moss, is that it? Jake the Moss. <laughs> <laughs> Multitask I am, I'm making a coffee and pee. Oh my gosh, let's not look. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Multitasking. Right, decided I'm hungry. I'm going to have some pork crackle for breakfast. This is actually really cool because the ingredients are just pork rind and high oleic sunflower oil. So where are we headed today? Camel wheel. Right. Camel wheel, mate. Camel about wheel. A, what, about 150 k's or something yeah, like that, I think? about 150. Yeah, and we're camped on a billabong or a creek or something. River, I think. River. Riverfront. I've got my coffee. I'm pumped. That's so easy. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. I'm glad I cleaned my car 20 k's ago. Yeah, it's looking really good. Look right here. Look this. So, so good. Clean in there. Not too bad in there. So I just feel like I need to point out to you that if you come towards us on the road and wave, he will not wave back. He doesn't wave back. So I'm ah. feeling bad and I'm here going like this, unless you're driving a Chevy, in which case he might flash his lights at you. No, stuck on my face on the one hand of the steering wheel. I'm a safe driver. Look, boy, I've got one hand of the steering wheel. Nah, he just doesn't like waving. He says there's too many people on the road to wave at now, so. You're doing a sort solar after a big day driving now, aren't you? <laughs> so anyway, don't take it personally. You'll stop. Happy with it. The only thing is, there's a little Honda generator over that side. Oh, so we can just cut the cord. Cut the cord. Yeah. Just don't cut it when it's on. <laughs> So good, I used to have one of those, now I've got one of those. But this fast chicken curry recipe is so good. Got some chicken thigh fillets and that is what's going on in there. I can't really see right now. So that's heating to temp, currently it's at 70. This here is what's going on with the battery system. So I've got quite a bit of solar coming in at the moment and you can see it's fluctuating 
with how much it's drawing, but definitely not an issue. You can see here I'll be cooking for three minutes on 100, then 10 minutes at 100, then 15 minutes. So I'll be cooking for a little while. This Slime Room monitoring system here tells me that that will be A-OK. -okay. I'm in here making chicken curry, and he's out there. He's eating a toasty with slopped. Donna is going to eat the curry, and he's going to eat the toasty. I thought I'd give you a little rundown with less than a minute to go. Up here, we have... You can still see what it's drawing out, what's being put in. And look at that. That's like next to no battery, 2% to cook for all that time. Here we go. And how good is that? Donna, lunch is nearly ready. I decided to cook some microwave rice to go along with it. You can see in in here what we're drawing so now we're down to 97 percent so basically to cook the curry and the rice it's used um three percent of the battery come in entree look she's <laughs> joining me for lunch i'm so excited to be coming to miriam's for lunch we're leaving the children out there with the boys and we're having a quiet lunch i'm very excited it's lovely <laughs> Is delicious. What do you think of yours? I think it's beautiful. Thank you so much for cooking for me again. I think the best part's being in here with the door locked, isn't it? <laughs> we need to do that more often. We do. Now you love Thermomix as well, hey? I You've love got yours in the van. Thermomix. I love my Thermomix. I have got an older model, but this is how good they are. Mine has been going for about 11 years oh. and still going. I have had to replace the blades three times because I use it so much, but it's so good, especially with the kids, to just whip up my taco mince, spaghetti bolognese. We've got chicken curries. We do um, chicken stroganoffs. Throw it all in. Cook it. Walk away. Do biscuits? something else. You made us biscuits the other day. Biscuits. Addie made biscuits. Luigi's 40-second biscuits. They're the best. They're the I've bomb. got them saved in mine as well. <laughs> so good. They are. I love my Thermomix. So I could not travel without it. Oh, oh, oh we've, we've got on someone door. trying to come in. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Here we go. Busy little campsite. So many vans parked up. Were these vans all here when we got here? No. They all just arrived. Yep. Chris has found some caves or holes in the ground or something. I'm not quite sure what it is, but we are heading off to explore. Have a look, take a few photos, but I don't know. Adventures. So I found where we're going. It's Camerwheel Caves National Park. Looks like it's about 25 k's down this dirt road, so it's come wheels, right? Mm -hmm. What are you what are you trying to do? Are you shooting me shooting you? <laughs> Look! Oh Donna's learning to use the camera! <laughs> I'm learning new skills! Alright, what do we got here, tour tour guide? I haven't even looked yet. Oh my my fly net's not really practical right now. Um, welcome to Camomile Caves National Park. What's so special? Originally part of the Rockland Pastoral Holding, the National Park was excised and gazetted in 1998. Camomile Caves are unique as they have formed in the ancient Dolomite seabed I know that, of yeah. the Barclay Tableland laid down about 500 million years ago rather than in limestone where caves are more often found. Recent exploration has found that several caves are connected underground by passages and vertical shafts. It may be that many of the caves are connected in this way, forming an extensive cavern. Um, system and significant ground water pathway. About 80 known and a further 67 possible sinkholes occur on the table end. Great. Most of these are in the Camel Wheel region. The park includes only a small number of these sinkholes and caves. <gasps> but we knew all that. We just wanted to let you guys know. Didn't we? Honey? Yep, exactly. We knew so all that. Says here, we are here. And the Nalrani water hole and the Nalrani, I guess that's how you say it, caves. Are here so 220 meters return to the cave and 70 meters return to the little one. Oh, nice shirt! Turn around, show us your shirt. Woo -hoo -hoo. What a rad chick! Is she looking sexy or what? What are you talking about? You, am I gonna kiss you? <laughs> That's the reason I'm wearing That's the it. reason you're probably wearing it. Though. Yes, it is. You see, I have no flies on my face. I don't do I have flies on my face. You did. Well, I've got a lot of hair. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty grey, aren't I, these days? I'm happy with my fly net. This is the first time I've actually remembered to put it on. So. Uh, all right, let's so, keep going to these caves, eh? Hey? Oh, what I'm 
assuming it's the entrance. Are you standing on solid ground? Yes, but not too far. The earth opens up into cavernous galleries, tunnels, and vertical shafts. Here we go. See what's down here, I guess. Watch out for snakes, guys. Bye, see you later. How right is this place? Now I'm where you were standing, and it's like a really long way down there. We're in a little like hole now. We've walked into it. And then if you go down here, and it just continues to go right down. Can you see the bottom? That was a little freaky, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a little freaky. I think this next one that we're going to is a lot bigger. It just so. says, what did that sign say? Death may result from walking around. Injury yeah. or death. It's, it's insane. It's like it's all volcanic. It's really rough and pitted and there's like drill holes in it. It's almost like the rocks are hollow. Yeah, it's pretty freaky, but anyway, let's go have a look at this next one. Oh, is this one more groovy Yes. Chris, if there was a ladder, would you climb down in there? Yeah, bro. I reckon we should go down there now. Let's just climb on some rocks. What do you think? Uh huh. Huh? Hey, kids, what do you think? It's awesome, bird. It's awesome. Big hole in the ground. Yeah, it's just one big hole in the ground. Rocks around the top of the Great Irani cave show how water has filtered through cracks and layers to dissolve the dolomite and open up the earth. There you go. In the wet season, intense rain brings water gushing over land to tumble into the 18 metre deep entrance pit below, continually dissolving and evolving the shape of the cave. Parts oh. of the sinkhole wall look like they are melting. This is another result of water when it trickles slowly and deposits minerals on the rock face. There you go. Fascinating. Looks like there's a little path that runs around here. Let's go find out where this goes. I reckon we can get down there. Oh, these are way up there. There they are. This place is nuts. Look at that over there. It's like an acro prop to hold it all up. That's another cave that goes into there, another huge cavity. And then have a look at this. Look at that. It's weird. This is way better than the other one. Come and have a look. Come down. It does, doesn't it? Look at this, walk to the edge. The tree root running down there. Oh, that thing, oh, they're like a fig tree one. Do you remember in Cairns, babe? Yeah. They had the fig tree in the cave and it was like glistening and shining all the way from the inside. It's amazing, isn't it? How insane is that? <laughs> Very insane. Are you alright? I walking stick. It's a little short. <laughs> crazy, eh? Yes. I think there's another one somewhere, but we're gonna look go look at this. Look this. This is what is crazy. Look. Oh, yeah, look. See? That's what I was telling you about the holes. Look at the holes. Oh. Check. I think I'm... See? It's like all the rocks are hollow. Two caves, now we're gonna go check out the water hole. Two caves. Two caves. The Rani water hole. Wow, what a gorgeous afternoon. Righto, you wanna give us a little uh little bit of history here as to what's going on, babe? Again, I haven't even read the sign. Nice, nice. There's no fires, dude, you know that. Okay, so is that just because you didn't put makeup on? Stop! <laughs> 
There are flies and they're everywhere and they're annoying. Oh, okay. So, the waterhole, a temporary refuge. This is the biggest found on the park, lies along the Nalrani Creek and drains into the Georgina River, one of the many waterholes in the catchment that are essential in providing refuge and food for wildlife as oh. the landscape transitions into the dry season. Oh, there we go. How amazing is this? It is. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm yeah. glad we decided to come here. That was one adventurous afternoon, wasn't it? It was. It was. Um, and did you see that sunset, by the way? And exactly. it is still, exactly. if you can see, just out there. Look how red that is. things have changed we we're going to stay two nights but we've decided to move on to Barclay because it looks amazing so <laughs> instead of getting up and doing a workout we've gotten up and packed up and we're about to head off here we go if you can look ahead looks like the border here we go they're going to start checking passes now has never been to the NT so you can see it's so different <laughs> she's a little excited actually does the time change yes time does change not by much so half hour or something backwards like. or forwards I don't know <laughs> well now we're in a different time zone <laughs> <laughs> let's go have some fun here we go concerned that there might not be sites. Check it out. Heaps of sites. Apparently the spot we were in wasn't ideal so he's moving while I'm inside the van which is of course fine. Um, but yeah check out the sites. This is a good way to give you a rolling tour. Quite sure where he's going or what's happening. Okay, let me go this side. Ah, oh, he's doing what I suggested. He's going in this way so that our doors face each other. Oh, lovely. So out one side we have that empty sites, and out this side. We have these guys for two more nights before we part ways at the three ways. When I did the grocery shopping, Chris was adamant that I buy food so we can cook on the campfire or camp oven on the campfire. Last night we didn't have time, so we cooked on the induction cooktop. And again today, it's not the kind of weather or place to cook on the camp oven. So I'm using 
the thermal cooker and I'm gonna do a beautiful slow cooked beef stew. All right, so we pulled up at Barclay. Are you getting dinner ready for tonight? I am, yeah. What you cooking? Well, this was meant to go in the camp oven, but- We can't have fires here, so. No camp oven tonight, so. So what you doing? Um, well, I'm just, let me turn that off. Um, I'm just gonna fry up some veggies and onion, put some meat in there. I'm gonna throw some of that in and a bit of What's beef. That? Stock. It's puttanesca. It's like pasta sauce, but I'm just mm. going to throw it in Shall there we anyway. Put some of this in too. That's got, hasn't even got heat written on it, but it says may it's cause anal. Black a label. Oh no! Hot sauce. Sixteen out of ten. What no. Is, what does it say? May what? May cause anal leakage. <laughs> That's not going in my. No. <laughs> it's not going in my. So anyway, you're putting it in the big pot. Explain. Actually, I think I'm changing my mind. I think I might make stroganoff. Anyway, I'm going to cook. Cook the food in here for 30 minutes and then I'm going to put it in the pantry and then it'll cook by itself for like four, five, six hours, however long. Then I'll take it back out and we'll eat it for dinner. So yeah, but what is it? Thermal cooker. It's the thermal cooker. So it's like a slow cooker, but you don't need power. Okay, so you roughly cook it. You cook it, boil it, whatever, for 30 minutes, get it really hot, seal it up. And then put it back into here. Put it in there. Put the lid on, it on, close it up. Seal it up, put it in the pantry where it lives and it just cooks by itself. And how good is this for when we go on long trips? You cook in the morning, I actually we get back in the arvo. I this when we did the Big Red Bash and I made the food the morning before we left and when we got up to St. George, dinner was cooked. So, so good. Easy! I rate this, the thermal cooker though. It's awesome. Yeah. Thermal cooker, air fryer, thermomix. Three things that I would yeah. not be without. And a good lithium battery system to run it all. Yeah, true. So this does not need a lithium battery no, system. No. This is just a little bit of heat, gas, electricity, whatever you got. Just heat it up 30 minutes and then boop. While I'm waiting for this, I just took the lid off so you can have a look. There's a big chunk there of frozen bone broth out of my freezer. Um, I was having a read of this here. This is all what's available breakfast lunch drinks happy hour takeaway alcohol entertainment dump point wi-fi laundry amenities powered sites um, swimming pool etc but on this side i thought it was really cool it says this is um, one of the most isolated roadhouses in australia they generate their own power using diesel generators and solar panels and during the season can go through up to 700 liters of diesel per day they maintain their own bore treat their own water it's safe to drink and do it all without any government assistance so the 40 dollars a night um, might seem steep, but it's really not. I decided to head into the bar for some happy hour fun. So many people in here have had to shuffle a few tables around. Where's their hand? Having a bit of a dance in here. <laughs> Chris is, well, eating the bread. And this is our slow cooker. Stop it with our neighbour, Donna. Shoot, ready. <laughs> Donna's borrowing the microwave. Yeah, it's having a dance I'll while she waits. Oh, that neighbour. <laughs> we love you. Hey, your boots spin. Oh, no, no. We've just been to happy hour, so we're kind of happy. Happy, happy. Woo. <laughs> Most mornings that we've been hanging out with the Campedia crew, Donna and I have been getting up and doing a workout and it's been awesome. Um, I am a personal trainer and that's the thing that I miss the most about being on the road. I teach group fitness classes as well, I miss that so much. So having a workout buddy has been awesome. Chris doesn't work out with me, sad face. But I brought stuff with me. I've got like my, um, my hula hoop that's like a spring one, kind of like a slinky. I've got my slam ball, I've got my my bands, my ropes, my ab roller. I've brought a few things with me, so it's, it's kind of fun creating a little circuit for the two of us. So I'm about to head outside and do that now. Hey Donna, you looking ready to work out? <laughs> it's a bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll warm you up, honey, I'll warm you up. I'm working out, drinking my cup up. <laughs>
That was the best little workout, and little Jakey, Jacob, has been working out with us most mornings. He's adorable, and he gives it a really good, like a red hot crack. And at the end this morning, he came up and said, thank you so much. I said, no worries, that'll be 50 bucks. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Donna and I did some more stuff, and then he came back with his wallet. He gave me $50. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna sneak it back to his mum later on, actually. Jacob, if you're watching this, I didn't give it back to your mum. I'm keeping it. I said, oh, I need his cuddles, buddy. He's so adorable and he does such a good job. So, awesome workout. Hopefully, we can sneak one in tomorrow morning before we head off. This is our last um, couple of days with these guys. So it's been amazing. This is our first morning here. It is about 10 to 10. We did a workout, as you saw. Um, we arrived here yesterday at about 10 o'clock, no, 11 o'clock, and the place was pretty empty. There weren't many vans here. By 1 o'clock, the place was absolutely chockers. Um, as I said, it's like 10 to 10 now. The place was empty. Well, it's still kind of empty now, but vans are starting to roll in. So we're going to go for a bit of a wander, have a look and check the place out. A dust storm coming at us. Would you believe it? Behind that building right there is where I just hung the clothes out. Oh, there it goes. Check it out. Yay! Dump point. Very convenient. I want to show you the clothes one. And I can see that there are sprinklers on. I wonder if they reach the clothesline. Let's just stand here and find out, eh? I think it comes close. It does come close. And yes, <laughs> the wind is blowing it onto the clothes. Fantastic. So just to note, if you're hanging your clothes out, check that the sprinklers aren't on first. And well, they weren't on when I hung them out, but they are now. So they might take a little bit longer to dry, but it's super windy today, so. I don't know, maybe it'll even out. Look how windy it is. It's quite a large property, heaps of places to camp. I think there's a hundred powered sites from memory and there are heaps of unpowered as well. Enjoy the place because you're not going to find another one like this out here. What's so special about this place? Uh, because we look after it and we do keep it clean. Uh, we all work very hard to, to do that. Very high maintenance here but we work for the best people on the planet too so that helps. <laughs> it sure does. You love your job then? Yeah I like my job and uh, I like this roadhouse. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Australian Outback <laughs> because I find it boring, but I'm too busy to be bored. Where would you live if you could live anywhere in Australia? Back home, Newcastle. Newcastle. The, the beautiful, rich Hunter Valley. Oh, gorgeous. Do you think you'll head back one day or are you here yeah. now? You will head back? Yeah. Yes, I definitely will. You, how long have you worked here for? 14 and a half years. You've worked here for 14 and a half years? Wow. Well, you've done a fabulous job. Thank you very much. Hey, I only came here to turn the sprinklers on. <laughs> you came here to turn the sprinklers on and look, you had a bit of a chat with me. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I'm Tony, by the way, and you are? I'm Miriam. Nice to meet you. <laughs> had an offer I can't refuse. Being offered a lift down to check out the airstrip. Taking me? Oh, down to the garbage tip and then along to the airstrip. Okay. Here I am with Tony again. He's come and found me. We're gonna go check out the, what is it, the garbage? Oh, well, 
garbage chip in that Garbage hole. chip in the okay, airstrip. Okay, Miriam down and uh, you can check out our airstrip. Oh. Which you probably don't expect to find out in the middle of nowhere here. Definitely not. So what planes use the airstrip? Who's that for? Well, it's a government funded strip that is uh, um, essentially for the flying doctor. Oh, but of okay. course, because it's here, plenty of others use it as well. Yeah. Like Char Air. Yeah, okay. Excuse the noise. Woo, what was that switch? That's uh, getting the hydraulics in the tipper working. Actually doing a dump run. Well, this is something I didn't expect to be doing today. Now we're going on an adventure to the airstrip. We are at the end. much for taking me on this adventure today. No worries. Have you got any other adventures up your sleeve or is that it now? <laughs> oh, you never know, I might find something else to take you on. How about but an adventure at the pub a bit later on? An adventure at the pub sounds real good. See you in a couple of hours for a beer? Yeah, right. Eh? Uh, give me a time, I'll be there. Three o'clock. Right, eh? see you there. See you there. <laughs> This is what happens on the road. The wife takes control of the facial hair. And you've done a fabulous job, Donna. How much better does that? We should oh, have done a before and after. I'm very impressed with what you've done here. Keep your eyes shut down. Getting rid of the monobrow. Woo! And I've just got to wax in between the middle. His eyebrows you're talking yeah. about, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just use a clipper it today. Oh! oh I'll get the camera out right as you come up. Oh! You know what I'm crazy, Hello. Mate. Wow. Hello! Hello! A lot has gone on this afternoon. It's been pretty awesome. We are definitely not the only people here now. The place is packed full of people we don't know, but there are also so many people we know here. It's awesome. I'm going to show you over there a big old truck that just rolled in. A couple of familiar faces. I'm not going to go over there and interrupt because they just rocked up and have just checked in but they're going to come and have a few beers with us soon which is going to be awesome. Here's some birds. Hey. Hello. Hi. I just told Chris that I was going to get some lip gloss and I've been gone for ages so I better get myself back in see what's going on at the pub. This is what's going on at the pub. Hey. Good boy. Look who we got here, Mr. Miko. Hey. Bloody legend this guy. What are you doing in the outback, hey? Yeah, we're gonna go and gonna go and pay nine holes at Apertula. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, we're gonna go and race the Fink. Um, it's a long time dream of mine. Um, it's unfortunate I'm racing in a rubber band powered jet, <laughs> rubber band powered. Jet, jet ski on wheels, but it goes pretty good. We should have a good time and hopefully the bike boys make some whoops in the pre-run and rough it up for us. Rough it up. We might have a good run. Because if it, when it comes to King Operate racing shops, this is. This is Mr. King's, mate. Come no, on, mate. I'm not, Come on. I'm definitely not. Come we on. Try, we try our hardest to, yeah. for all our customers. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think the customers in our class all have an unreal package. I think that if we all have a good run, like you got Kai, Kai Floyd, okay. you've got the Swinglehurst boys, Jeff McNiven, yeah. Phil Lovett, um, uh, Glenn Ackroyd. Like there's a heat. There's a there's a long there's a list. Big, of, a, yeah. There's a long list of fellas that yeah. have got our product yeah. and that we've spent a lot of time developing a good package for. So I think I think if everyone has good reliability, hopefully we'll have a, a King Shock number one in class and. Yeah. Hopefully it's a, a Mike Shock's tune one, which I <laughs> think it will be. And it, it's, it's like my dad said though the other day when everyone was throwing their 
you know, their hat in the ring for who's going to win and whatever. And, and he said the only thing that's certain is the uncertainty of the outcome. Exactly right, mate. Exactly yeah. right. It's a long race, too. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah, it, look. How many Ks is it? We're, I think it's like, in total, probably like four... 400, it's four... 460, close okay. to, And but, what road wow. are you racing on? It's the... Road? Did you say road? <laughs> it's the, um... It's the service road. I guess it's just off the service road yeah. that runs between Alice, Alice Springs and the Garn. Yeah. Uh, not the Garn, and Fink. And it, Fink. It, yeah, so it like follows the old Garn Railway. Yeah. And it's sort of southwest, is it? Yeah, yeah. South, south, south. 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 Yeah. So I, I'm not sure exactly, but the, the community that we raised to is like... It's very close to the central of yeah, Australia, okay. if, you, if you're on a map and yeah. drop a pin. Just so right in it. It's fun. Like, it's just insane. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's a, different, it's a different experience to other races in Australia. It's the only yeah. race you can camp trackside, yeah. unregulated, yeah. cut the roof off your VT Commodore and yeah. have a party. And there'll be plenty of those out there anyway. Yeah, 100% yeah, there will yeah. be though. Like. Should be good. Which one? Which, is lot, which track we got to go? Which track? Hang on. So Jacob's have a look. in love with him. Simon's trying to beat him some scores. Okay. Oh wait, what? Come on then, let's beat it. And here they are. We were raising them. Hello. And you were heading north, but now you might be going to join us. Oh, I feel like here, President. <laughs> These guys were going to go north, but now they're going to join us too. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I thought that was pizza. Chicken parmesan. Mine. All mine. What system we go now? Check out what's directly behind us right now. You go, girls. 